Back in a minute. You lie down. The Watchword Podcast is back. This is episode 47 in audio, episode one in video, and uh, we've got a new model, a new way of doing things. It has been a while since I recorded a podcast, and uh, the reason is because my business, Watchword, uh, grew very quickly and I couldn't, I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. The goal of the podcast remained the same, which is we're going to speak to people about their experience, their decisions and the factors behind them, but we're also going to talk about what they do uh, to get the, get the best out of themselves, whether that's physical, mental, uh, emotional or spiritual. So we're going to meet up with people, do something physical with them. That might just be, uh, might be a walk, it might be a run, it might be a ride, it might be a dip in the sea. Something that they do to manage their performance and get the get the best out of life. So episode forty-seven is with Krishna Thapa. Krishna is from Nepal. He was born in Nepal. And uh, he joined the Gurkhas as a teenager. In order to get into the Gurkhas, you have to outcompete, if you like, outcompete tens of thousands of applicants, which he successfully did. He then spent seven years in the Gurkhas uh, in the British Army and then applied to join the Special Forces and was successful. And he uh, became part of 2-2 SAS. He spent 17 years in the SAS, ended up being in charge of mountain troop, and in doing so has now become a highly accomplished mountaineer, climbing Everest multiple times, and uh, many of the other above 8,000 meter peaks. He recently uh, broke a world record, or helped someone break a world record by leading an expedition uh, for a guy called Harry, who was also in the Gurkhas, who's the first ever double above the knee amputee to climb Everest. Krishna was raised as a Buddhist in Nepal and uh, ended up returning to those spiritual uh, values and practices during his career, following a, a traumatic event. It was a f f absolutely fascinating discussion. We got very lucky with the weather. We ended up recording it outside. And if I'm being completely honest, I found it, I found him to be one of the most interesting people I've ever spoken to uh, because of the balance between a life in the, in the military, particularly in, uh, um, in the special forces for that long, for 17 years. Um, but then his outlook and beliefs in terms of um, Buddhism and his purpose and I guess the meaning of life. So pretty deep stuff, but a fascinating conversation. Very, very humble individual. This is the Watchword Podcast. It's great to be back. Hope you enjoy the episode. And the watchword this week is mountaineering and Buddhism. If we were to go back to the, yeah. uh, to like the beginning of your, your career when mm. you were first with the Gurkhas, did you, your, from a spiritual perspective, you, you would, different to how you've now evolved to be in terms of your outlook? So basically, I think my, as I as I grown up in the Himalayas, uh, born in a, I actually born in a jungle, yeah, because of the ritual and the, you know, like the traditional. In, in, in Nepal, uh, still we are not allowed to born in the mom house. We have to born in a dad house. Okay. So my dad, uh, my mom ran when she was uh, sick, giving a birth, and as she ran to his uh, mom house, obviously because of love and affection she got from mother is not nothing else. And as she ran into mom house, and then um, all the you know like local and the village elders and priest and monk from village come out and pull her out from house, drag her to the jungle, and she's like, no, you are not allowed to born, uh, you are not allowed to give a birth inside the mom house so 
So she was holding a parent, holding a tree. Actually, I went and visit, uh, you know, when I joined the Gurkhas and, and see where I actually born and, you know, tree and I still got the picture with me. So uh, that's kind of my uh, birth in Nepal. And obviously, like, like um, uh, just for those people who are listening, still the 90% people in Nepal believe in faith and believe in like Buddhism, Hindus or Christian or Muslim. So everyone actually goes to a temple, it's still maybe one in one country in the world. And, um, and the only the unique thing about the uh, uh, thing Nepal is we are so diverse in so many ways, like biodiverse from the sea level to the world highest. And the, you know, like culture and even the living creature, even trees and jungle is from sea level to, you know, like above 8,000 meters, which changes so many biodiversity in, in, the, in there. Because of that, we got a lot of belief and a lot of, you know, philosophy or traditional culture as the, basically as every uh, 100 ultimate, uh, 1,000 meter change, we got significant changing on the people and creature and everything is changing. That's probably what's unique thing about Nepal. And other other thing a lot, lot of people don't know is that the uh, Nepal is in 39, 40 degrees latitude in terms of universe, uh, earth, you know, uh, position. And also the, you know, like, because if you remember scientifically, earth is a little bit tilted yeah. and to the east. Yeah. So what that does is the anything to do with the realization about the life and spirituality being alive, is that the place we, Nepal is farthest way from the center of gravity of Earth. So when you're talking about the life, uh, spiritual, physical and emotional, is everything to do with the gravity, the gravity of Earth, our universe, and then the gravity of our own self. So uh, one of the biggest uh, realizing and finding for me is uh, every time I go climbing Everest or any other 8,000 meters, the further higher you go against the gravity, it's easy to realize this because it's very deep subject. But when you're talking about well-being, is that a lot of our sensation and memories store to our sexual part nearby the genitals. And that has to do all our memories and reaction. But everything is realization and mind is the the energy shifting from our survival path through our you know like spinal cord and realization come in the mind and became thought. That mind, or so we call the sensation through this you know like uh, whatever sensation we observe energy, is that the part of the you know. Uh, reaction of out, 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 you know, like from the like, like being here in, in, in the trees is different. We got a different sensation and by the mountain, I think. So that's the kind of grown up being kind of, you know, like grown up Himalayas and culture and the, like, let's say, you know, like priest or monk. And uh, still, but that, but still, you know, my, uh, my, my tribe is the Gurkha tribe. Over the th a thousand years, my granddad was a Gurkha. By then, was Indian Gurkha, which is still served under the British. And my grandfather was uh, actually died in Second World War. Mm. And what I mean is, even though we have that spiritual and uh, you know, like the traditional culture, but I would say our blood is still the part of the Gurkhas over a thousand years. Yeah. And especially, as you all know, uh, being a boy from Nepal, especially my tribe and my areas is every in my village, we got about 25 house. Every house got at least two or three Gurkhas, you know. So that's that's then because and also my my father was failed, failed Gurkhas. He tried two years joining the uh, follow his you know father, which is my grandfather. And he couldn't able to join because of the lack of education. And and he said when I was pregnant and my father and my mother's dream is oh my first son gonna join the Gurkhas and so in a way I'm still living and pleasing my parents' dream yeah. and I think I think if we look and feel so many ways you know if you like you say you have a you know young uh, twins daughter they had no choice where to born and which school to go and what to eat because we as a parents create that environment. Mm. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we do, and the the impact the on them is quite considerable, I guess. Yes, 
Absolutely. And it takes time to then sort of find your own path. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Whether, you, whether, you, yeah. whether you're young or whether you become an adult. Yeah. I guess for, for context, for people who, who don't know, like you've recently, in terms of how we like, how I heard about you, um, you've recently climbed Everest and you broke a, was it a world record? Yeah. Yeah. It's so record, yeah. the first above the knee yeah. W amputee to climb Everest was part of your team um, that you led. Yeah. So we'll I get because we'll come because I guess it's all connected. Your, yeah. your yeah. story is yeah, all connected. Yeah. But if we that particular achievement. It's kind of it just really I saw some footage from it and it really like blew my mind yeah. like how Harry yeah. and his ability yeah. to do that yeah and also one's um, a, a quote that he said and I'm, I'm I'm misquoting him but I think I don't know if it was a video or in um, text but he said something like it, it was about being grateful yeah and he talked about how grateful he is for everything and he listed everything that like key moments in his life yeah including when he got injured and he said, like in the, in the quote, he said, "I'm grateful to to Mr. Taliban for blowing me up." And I just, it's just so powerful. Yeah. And the fact that he's then climbed Everest with, with I mean, if you were to talk through that that journey, and your team, like how did it how did it come about, and who, who was in the team, um, and how did it go? So obviously, um, we the reference the Everest because the when I I, I was uh, I led the uh, Gurkhas and UKSF uh, Gurkha Everest, uh, Everest expedition 2015 and 16. That's where I hurry because we were swapped together briefly before. Obviously, I went to the Hereford and with the Harry, Then obviously, we never kind of in each other know. But when I when I uh, led the uh, Expedition. Then Harry found out, and obviously he he kind of you know called me and asked me, "Oh, Chris, brother, do you think I can climb the Everest?" And that was 2015 or 16. And and he was actually in in in, in a, he couldn't even walk properly. You know he and then and I said like I said like oh we can we can only try you know and then rather than judging the people, the way it looks, the way it feel. And I think it's everyone, in my mind, it's always everyone deserve and everyone deserve the opportunity. And let's, let's try. So 2016, and we start, uh, kind of start, you know, walking through and some small walk like this one today, you know, like, and it's still struggling, but I say like, okay, as long as we keep going. And the, and, and yeah, and then we kind of, actually broke six or seven world record as part because for him is everything he does is world record like climbing the Mount Blanc you know like um, uh, uh, highest peak in Africa and uh, trekking peak in Nepal and skiing in Nepal so everything he does is the kind of um, you know world kind of record yeah. and also I think one of the thing I the way my approach is um, I kind of at the moment working with the you know psychologists in the Cambridge University is that uh, the approach is if we climb if we want to run the hundred meter so let's say if you always focus on the end or finishing um, you know line or if you focus every 10 meter you know, yeah so I think they did the research and they found the people who are in the moment or who has the smaller step, focusing on the step rather than focusing. Yes, always have a vision to go there, but but driven by the moment or focusing what we can do here rather than there. I think that's the significant difference. And then they found those people who are in the moment focusing the 10 meter is more you know, resilience and more kind of successful than the 10. That's why we're saying that, okay, let's average it there, but let's not, you know, like kind of, let's not focus on that. Let's focus what we can do today. And that took in obviously a few, few years, um, about five, six years preparation. But I think that's, that's kind of my approach. And also I think other thing is the, uh, my realization is whatever we do in life, um, uh, so we have to focus, like we said, you know, like physical part. Everyone has limitation, isn't it? Everyone limitation so many ways, physical, but we don't see the limitation of our, uh, you know, like uh, well-being, uh, being a spiritual. But the also my approach is um, 
in the uh, in in the Buddhist philosophy, let's say we 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 see the sun today. So sun part is the soul, and we call the mind. Mind part is the moon, yeah, and also the uh, and the spiritual part or spirit of our true self is that what we gather over the years of the memories and who we are identify with, and once that three sun moon and uh, you know like spiritual part or who we are as a human because it eight millions eight billions people everyone has a different memories and different way of you know growing up and culture the way we born and you know like condition with so then my uh, and other thing is a lot of people in life let's talk about the business or the you know like uh, in army or any of, the, or even in the family, or even for looking for the boyfriend, and girlfriend, we we look for the ability and intellectual power, what they can do for us, you know, what they can give us as a as an individual. If we are looking for a partner, what we actually after, as if you're looking for the work, we look, oh, what is your qualification? What they have their experience, but we don't look into the real character of the human being, how their heart beat, you know, how their well-being as a person. I think for me, those are the very important thing. And as part of the average selection, for so we had the biggest team because of the obviously over the years I realized the biggest problem, Harry being amputee uh, and being through in going through the, all the PTSD over the years and mental you know illness is that the he needed uh, he need almost three times slower than the average human being. So that time is the biggest factor, obviously, especially the et, uh, death zone. Three times uh, longer. Longer. Okay, so each stage takes three three times and longer. longer. So, yeah. yeah. So if it is taking the one hour, it's, we, we're yeah. always working for three hours, and that will come with the. Then I say like, how can I prepare for that? Then I say like, let's have a manpower. Then you know, like it bring the really the, our military mindset of understanding how can we work in in reserve force, how can we have excellent system, you know, replacing place so that I I say like, oh, I can have rather than having two or three. Sherpas and guide. I said I can. I need to have at least eight Sherpas, so that will allow to continue for the hurry. But I'm allowed to give the Sherpas and guys to have a rest or replacing place. So that's kind of my one approach. And other one is like, uh, I think you know, for 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 the uh, sensation approach or for the you know like pleasure. Every sensation is attached with pleasure, and every. Um, uh, in 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 feeling is attached with the pleasure. What that means is that we only tell the people to push their limit by outside, uh, you know, like uh, implement it so much. Like but by by just giving them money, can you carry the you know like 10 kgs of wa water up to the camp for? But you can only push so much. But it is important. They have to willing to do that beyond the finance, you know, beyond the support and service. And as as a true human being, that's where we're talking about the true character of human being. And and it, that's why, as part of even selecting the Sherpas and guide, I was looking at rather than their strength, and the rather than their you know like uh, you know credential, like how many times you submitted or what is your experience. I rather have a conversation, and you know how much you willing to work for this one you know i think those are the very fundamental character building and we had a great team mm. so that's kind of the different kind of approach that's the third one and other one the last one i was looking at you know like historically especially for the average i think so many ways in the business and as well because let's say talk about average so average it has got the fixed four camps isn't it like cam one cam yep. two and everyone has their routine of like, oh, we go first rotation, camp one, camp two, and come down. And we're going to, the aim is either they make to the camp one or camp two or camp three. If not, they, if they can't make it, they turn around, okay, pack your bag, that's you're done. But I, then I said, you know, why the environment or people, all the, we made the people to draw the line and put in a box. I said, why can't the camp and why the people can work for us? or the people who are the kind of driven force mm. uh, in why don't we change the whole surrounding situation fit for who we are rather than we always try to fit with the outlier of the you know historic way of people doing thousand years and this is kind of the one maybe key changes and approach I had for this uh, average exhibition <coughs> and yeah those are the key uh, mm. problem and the way I approach.
So your team had uh, 10 people in it? Yep. Yeah. So you, Harry, and, and eight Sherpas? Yes, yeah. Wow, that's cool. So then, so essentially about six Sherpas to support Harry and then two to support you. Is that how it works? No, basically the way was we, uh, the one of the thing, obviously again, for my, my way, the ex, uh, design was everyone and everyone has to work in a team. No one leave the team. Yeah. So the, the minute we left the, let's say, FEP or the base camp, yeah. we, a lot of them keep in, put it in a military mindset. And we say like, okay, once you leave, I brief them, make sure everyone stay in the team because for me it's you know like and also that will allow me as a leader to see how is everyone doing and how is everyone feeling and then and then also the if something happened you know we got like if if one is very you know like it's a lot more uh, subjective danger than because then objective danger that is a lot of you know outside danger so it might be fit and hundred percent but still something goes wrong yeah. so I said like whole aim is to success success is that how not only submit but how can we submit and the way we do is the key thing so uh, uh, yeah we always work together help together and so we never had like team, you know, apart, you know, when during the summit, of course, during the preparation and, you know, like all the time the people has to go and fix and, you know, put the thing. But when we're going for summit time, we stay together as a team. And if we anyone feel, then also give me time to think, right, if one guy is feeling bad, then, you know, how can we approach that? Who is going down? Who is going up in all this thing? Yeah. Yeah, and then when you see the footage of, of Harry and the, the like the mechanics of his movement mm. and the the kind of limitations of it, it's because uh, obviously it's a big task for anyone. You have to do a lot of preparation, but then I guess you put it. It makes sense when you say it, doesn't it? You you started really in 2015, 2016, yeah. preparing with him. Yeah. Incremental progress from the UK to then. So you said you did Mont Blanc and yeah, we did yeah. the Mont Blanc. Actually, we, there was a three double amputee, like Harry, Justin from X Rifle, and uh, Stephen from Royal Wells. Yeah. So we had a three three amputee, me, and then the three helper. So there's the another, you know, first kind of uh, triple amputee. And uh, I think if anything is the biggest lesson I learned actually climbing, it's not, you know, like for me as well is, you know, so let's put it this way, we always complain with the shoes, you know, not having the right shoes for climbing and cramp on. But mm. actually when we see the people have no legs, then we can learn actually what's the point of complaining not having legs and not having the shoes, you know, people don't have legs. I think those are the small thing and also, you know, when the three double MPD submitted on the, you know, Mount Blanc and I was there and I, I, was, I was saying, oh, thank guys you gave me. The realization who as as a human being to we are take it for granted but what i when i see you guys struggling and i feel you know bad because we still struggle because we have we got at least arms legs and you know every full body function and but you know but the three of them look up me and say right chris we are here because of you you know i think that's the compliment and you know like how can each of us like thankful for uh the way we see and take it for life Perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Perspective. I think the if one of the like, you know, we talked about the the kind of goals of having conversations like this and recording them and so on in terms of what why I do it and what I'm trying to achieve. Mm. And one of the like one of my own sort of reflections or observations as 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 you sort of or as I've gone through life is that whatever you whatever you can do to gain perspective whether it's whether it's a big thing or a small thing like it just the more you do it the the more you achieve like there's lessons to to be learned all over the place even even having a even having a dog as annoying mm -hmm. <laughs> as he can be um they they teach you some lessons in terms of absolutely like yeah. how to yeah. like how to approach life and what's important yeah. and you know going to different locations like the yeah. place we've come to here today um which we've you know got quite lucky by it's just even the small things like that yeah but then we can all we can all find perspective in in different areas but then that example there of that there's no kind of greater reminder of how of how lucky like we all are in different ways but 
I guess the challenge is how do you maintain that? Because it's it, it comes and goes. It can yeah, come and go, can't it? Yeah. So how do you how do you approach that? How do you maintain that perspective on a sort of day to day basis? Yeah, I think that is very one of the maybe you know like not many people ask this question. How I you know cope with my own personal because like I said, the biggest thing for me is. Uh, the culture and the society I grown up like Buddhism and Hinduism for, or the you know like the Samanism from that you know culture I grown up. So every day my routine will be, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of things if we want to talk because even though you know like even waking up from the bed, you know, uh, aware aware of the waking up. So basically when I wake up. I normally do what they call is the stretching before you are waking up in the bed, and what we call is the uh, merudanda in uh, in Sanskrit or Nepalese. Merudanda is, is spinal cord, yep. but meru is the uh, axis and danda is the universe. It's access to the universe through our own spinal cord. Yeah, nice. So and it is very important keep yourself or your body and emotional part as much as you know possible and active even you wake before you waking up you know those are the kind of mindful awareness and even though when you are if even you waking up try to wake up from your right side not from the left side because there's a huge amount of science and autonomy how the body work and function because our we call the mind or the uh, you know like key organs of our human body let's put it in the left side but in Nepalese we call the mon Obviously, English called, you know, like, you know, mind or it's the one word, it's very hard. And left side is almost like a liver and a right side is liver and big gap. Just waking up from your right side, you do a lot of good thing for your heart and lungs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are the things. And straight after waking up, I do the, you know, deep meditation, breathing. But breathing is also a lot of people now talk about the meditation, yoga and mindful. But actually what it does uh, scientifically and autonomically for the human being is the, uh, the, 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 the people talk about the, you know, like mindfulness and retreat. But actually the stress and anxiety doesn't come from mind. You know, it's, it's, it initiates from the lungs. So there is a one a nerve from the spinal cord goes straight to the uh, our lungs. The minute the lungs breathing oxygen level up and down, that trigger our you know nerve system and bring that thought thought process in different different kind of put you in a different state of mind. Then that will create the memories you know like either sad or bad or stressful or happiness sadness. Mm. Hence. Breathing is very important, you know, like there's a different way of breathing than Buddhist way and, you know, like yoga and they're called now box method and wing of method. Those are the things, but the, the, the real science is that, you yeah. know, how we could, I could do that. Definitely do that in the morning. Had a, definitely have a cold shower. Yeah, and every day. Every day. Every day cold shower. You know, but the, the there is also quite a lot of science and what it does. You know, also I was very fortunate to, you know, even the grown up with that culture, not knowing, but now I kind of share the the way of mindful or the meditation with the professor, and they give the scientific logic, and, and that's yeah. the way I'm kind of my daily routine start. Yeah. The connection between body and mind is something that I'm always I find very uh, in, interesting in terms mm. of that's where I notice like a really big difference myself mm, absolutely so if you can it's one of the reasons why having like a static job for me even though now I still spend a lot of time on the on the laptop yeah. and all that kind of stuff it's some kind of routine in the morning that just connects your your brain to your body or your, your mind um, to your body and sort of mm. wakes you up in in that manner is it's definitely made a big difference for me in it, doing like doing 10 minutes of stretching oh yeah breathing is some the breathing exercises because um, some of the methods that exist you know you yeah. can use like apps and yeah. so on I think I was I think I was listening to an interview or discussion recently where someone pointed out like using technology to connect to your mind and your body maybe isn't like the best way <laughs> yeah. and that's kind of thought actually because <laughs> yeah. that's how i've tried before i've yeah. tried to, 
uh, met some meditation apps um, and done the Wim Hof method on, mm. on, on your phone. Um, and I do, uh, you could, there's, because you can get into a meditative state doing lots of different things. Mm. That's what I find. So it's about finding a way that works for you, maybe. That doesn't you don't necessarily need to use one of those tools and i'm sure you don't use one of those tools i'm assuming you don't anyway yeah. um but yeah that's it's so even stretching so in the morning like um, i just do five to ten minutes of like yoga based stretching yeah to primarily t to like help the the spine and the posterior chain like wake up mm. and then and then walk the walk the dog and that yeah that ritual I find quite beneficial over yeah. over time. It kind of yeah. um, reduces stress. Although he's probably increasing stress today with his, <laughs> with his right. behavior. It's all right. You know, it's it's very interesting you said because we were we're talking about now with the dog or, and the thing because no, the no, we're not playing now. Yeah, we in 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 in, in 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 our ritual in in Nepal because we are the only country the dog has a Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Every dog has a Christmas day once in a year, and it's actually detected by the, not only by the human, but they, they look at the, you know, like how the universe and earth and planet and emotion work and how we, that day, and we give them a uh, dog. And also, uh, you know, that that's kind of the dog sex. And then also now we, when you're talking about the, you know, uh, body, uh, mind, and, but, you know, the, the way I grown up in the Buddhist philosophy, Buddha himself, you know, Gautama Buddha, his name is Siddhartha Gautama Buddha, you know, he was a prince. He was a son of the king in, in Nepal. Okay. Right? Yeah, 2,500 years ago. But, and when he became, before he became a king, he, he kind of gave up and then he went to the jungle and a lot of time spending. He just basically, he, he asked the question why the people die, you know, why people suffer. And then even though he being like, born in the big family and you know like kings and uh, like became a king then he said like he still suffer and then he couldn't find the answer so he went there and he invented like buddhist philosophy and then the enhanced the you know like even though there is like 100 years ago it's still the same spiritual path or you know self realization was there but not like a set like buddhism you know what is buddhism philosophy and then he he started and he find this let's say tools or mantra so one of the things he's finding he's sharing was stories every react every uh, uh, memory we created and every thought in, in come in our mind it's actually there is a reaction in our body first so if you if you know that reaction in the body before it became thought then you can control that emotion and stress before it even come in your mind but there is a saying also in Nepal when your body is interacting with someone body or when someone is uh, in your body level you are fine but when that energy and emotion penetrate your mind then we be a big victim and that's why this uh, the grown of all the ritual and traditional is to do with this how can you recognize that you know uh, the you know like that reaction then that reaction actually, if we put it in a really, really basic layman term, is that the um, universe is made of five key elements, I think which you are aware, like sun and water, food, and universe, which is holding the whole on earth and then the air. So if you look at the same portion of the earth existing life worth, and we human have the same portion and energy, same elements to become survival then if we just focus the way we uh, manipulate our air within us that's where the breathing come the way we food that's where the nutrition come then the way we interact with the nature because when you're talking about interact with the nature the minute we use like five senses like if you look in like more five elements five senses key part and and five senses the minute we use the one sense as a one time like if you're using reading and if you're writing if you're hearing some music that became memory yeah any memory either the happiness or sadness is actually a headache in long term we think it's a good but actually not 
And then when we're talking about coming in the nature, you know, like we're doing walking, talking, because we're not using one sense. The minute we are not using one sense, because when you're walking, we have to see, we have to feel what's going on, where's the danger, where you're going to put your feet, we're using pretty much all the senses. When you're using our all senses, that's where we start recycling our memory, our energy, and that's where it became new, you know, new perspective and new opportunity for us. I think that's probably the biggest finding of the Buddha himself. And then uh, he actually did a lot of walking, uh, you know, like he, they said he walked like thousands of miles in like, and realizing and walking. But obviously later on he became, when he became sick and when he became old, then he sit down on the trees and and the only way to meditate is close his eyes. That's where the all, everywhere Buddhas, you know, like pictures, yeah. close eyes. And and the, the thing is now with the scientifically now back up, 80% of our memories we gain from the eyesight. Then minute we close our, sort our eyesight, but still active our senses, then we can only live in reality. You know, if you hear all the birds chanting, everything is now, isn't it? It's not past. So that's, that's how we connect it with the reality now. I think that's actually the basic tool of meditation and mindfulness. It's a beautiful thing. And it's, and it is, like you say, it's, Backed by science as well, like it's proven that you're, the way that when they measure brain activity yeah. when you're walking, um, in terms of your ability to to process and so on and so forth. So it's um it's fascinating. So you we, we've talked obviously about about sort of being spiritual, I guess, yeah. and Buddhism and that those yeah. those concepts and how it relates to Nepal, the culture, um. And then, to an extent, the the Gurkhas. But obviously, the, the the history of the Gurkhas is one of of being warriors, essentially. I yeah. guess, right? Yeah. Which, um, particularly in the modern era, it seems quite contrary to the to that spiritual approach. Yeah. And you've said that you're like it's been a it's been a, a journey yourself from from being a young man to where you are yeah. now. So. When you look, when you look back on that on that journey, because you said that when you were young you found it f frustrating and annoying to follow the practices. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what led to those to those changes to be to be where you are now? Yeah. So uh, I think obviously, like you say, you know, like grown up in Himalayas, like following the, all the ritual, the traditional of Buddhism, and also now. Like I say, my tribe with the being a Gurkhas and always, you know, blood of a Gurkhas, so many ways. And and actually, uh, like I say, I hate it when I, because in the way I grow, the, in the village I grown up is, if you're being a first elder son, you are responsible to carry on the, like, ritual part. Then me being a first, so that the normal routine will be like, 4 a.m., wake up, have a cold shower, change it, white, red, yellow dress which is, I realize now, is to do with the different planet and domination of the energy. So you change according to that, and then you worship, worship the tree, worship the dog, you know, worship the uh, stone, and do the thing. And then, then that's kind of ritual, which is, no, no kids like that, you know, grown up, but that's the culture, and it's still, it's still alive in my village. Anyway, then uh, joining the Gurkhas and and uh, uh, the thing struck me going back to who I am and finding who I was and why I was doing as part of grown up was in actually in the Iraq I think zero zero six zero seven uh, it's my second tour and um, as we going through the uh, we call mission let's say going to the target and the mission and one of the you know. Uh, the my colleagues was a really good friend of mine was the uh, second in command in the patrol and um, as you're going through the door he tapped my uh, shoulder and said Chris you stay back because you've got a family and kids I have got I'm unmarried and I'll go through the door and second thing I see is he was dropped dead and even though you know I we I think the situation we we uh, that's probably the first time, you know, I realized we are all human, no matter what job we're doing. And because I cried and I did a little bit of reflection on the target because, and 
you know, that could have been me. And and by someone has done the ultimate uh, sacrifice for you, for yourself. And then that was actually British SAS guy from Britain, you know, true gentleman. And and then I, you know, did a lot of reflection. And but again, I wake up actually when the actually bullet was still going and I was like, you know, I can't cry here, you know, this is not the time to cry. Then you realize and you need to get your thing together and still do the mission. But uh, the main realization later on on the evening was, I, it took me a lot of dark places, you know, so many other, but bear in mind, this is just my beginning of my career. And then, um, you know, it took like the way we people talk about in, in, let's say in the modern era, we talk about racism and people talk about, you know, all this thing, domination. But actually, I think if we look in life and it, I ask the same question, how deep and how much uh, down and ups you've gone through the life, you know, if you live in a sensitive or, you know, uh, uh, living in a mind, uh, in your, so we call the mind uh, uh, level, not in a life term, but if you live in a mind term, then these are all the superficial things come up. You know, we talk about this, you know, you, that, in me, and but when you go to the inner feeling and true life term, I think we all are same and we are all equal. And does that, that's less not just the people the way you see or heard or think, not only in the UK, but around the world, you know, a lot of people think. Or with that and with that, but actually, when you go to the death zone, you know, when you go into the in happiest moment, we never, we are so much into our own life, Tom. We never see anything good or bad, but it's just the way it is. We look at, we perceive, and that is the biggest lesson learned. And but actually, through that, then actually, I also going through a lot of, you know, deep down because. I could have been dead by now, and, and am I living for him? You know, am I living serving the country for his purpose because he was a true gentleman? And uh, a lot of question, and then that, and then then because then not only that after that series of you know because um, almost did the 12 tour in uh, operation to around the world, and that every moment and every. Uh, situation dragged me down and down and I realized then only way to get out is to realize who we are and what's the purpose of true, true human being and what's the purpose of soldier and and then that's where I put in a lot of people a lot of thing in perspective like uh, invented like a military mindset what is military mindset what is the spiritual mindset what is the culture and society try to teach us in, in the Himalayas? But what is the culture and society try to teach us in the, in the Western world? So we call it in the UK. And actually, you know, so much, so much uh, uh, you know, uh, commonality, you know, so much. Uh, I think in, in deep down, is we, we all want to be, a, you know, uh, human. You know, we want all of you make the world safer, isn't it? We all want to be, give our kids and uh, family who hold our, uh, kids uh, and then the country who hold our family, you know, like call, we call home, you know, hold them as a true gentleman, uh, not only the like man world, but you know, when you're talking about the wartime, those who serve is that common purpose, and and that come with a lot of sacrifice, isn't it? And then that come with sacrifice, and that that tried to give me to a deep analysis, and because today I was very lucky to meet you and share the stories that the that's where I start finding my four years, five years old young Krishna, you know, walking and doing the ritual and retreat in the Buddhism philosophy in the Himalayas. And every uh, ritual and every, like, worshipping a dog, you know, nothing, uh, actually, then I did a lot of research on it, then what they realize is we as a human, all the animal creature, living creature, when their uh, tummy is full, when they are full, f their, their hunger is gone, they are happy and then they have no problem. But we, as a human, when our everything is with us, like our we got a house, we got a wife, we got you know like fridge full of fruits mm. and food, then you got a, we got a huge problem, mm. isn't it? Yeah, it's and, true. Yeah. When you have something that you're <laughs> striving for yeah. or struggling for, yeah. then you don't then 
you have less problems because yeah, you're yeah. focused on the yeah. objective. Yes, and I realized that as well, even in my own life, you know, uh, b before I never seen the bus, I never seen the electricity, you know, until I joined the Gurkhas, you know, came here. But the the main thing is, and I I struggle as well, you know, even though I grown up in pop in in the remote village with no education at all, academic education, no formal teaching. But again, I think the whole being lifelong is, I still look my mom, she can't even write or wrong, but as a human being, you know, she grow, she grow four of her kids without having any, but uh, the, I think if we live, look into life in lifetime, how the all living creatures live, we don't need any form of, uh, you know, just men. Only the education give us a judgment and this good and we want to do that mm. and that I think if you live in the lifetime, you know, we, we all complete as a human and That's what the actually ritual and worshiping the dog worshiping the trees is that because worshiping the trees is because if you look it not like our Sense perception, but if we, we can look all of these trees and if we realize one of our lungs is hanging on the tree isn't it? Mm. We don't we don't see this thing, mm. but how can we realize that is through that you know real, in life forced to like let's worship the what they try to teach us is that oh, look after the nature you know we are part of the nature you know, imagine in that thing if we are not appreciating, and if we look we talk about the five key elements of our life to survive, and everything is actually. Either of the five senses we can see, touch, or taste. We can see the air. We can, you know, of course, if this little bit of wind comes, you can feel it, but actually we can't taste it, you know. Those are life elements without, in any second, we will be poof, gone. But yet again, we don't, we are not appreciate enough to realize that. I think those are the true Buddhist culture and society to realize you to that. And then, Everything is bonus, and what's the problem? It's, it's not such a problem, but obviously it's hard. And but again, I think my realization come with the uh, pushing the limitation as a human, pushing the like uh, scientific research behind, and being 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 you know like a soldier from the British Army. It's also, we need to drive and you know thrive. What we have in the mission, you know, like either in the mission in the in the war time or just living with the kids and family in the kitchen in the home, you know, it, it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of understanding and courage, you know, those are the things. But I think it is important, but also I think it's equally important us to realize, you know, for grateful what we have and that only come with the understanding and it's called meditation, but you know, like it's in a way sometimes we mean misunderstood meditation and ritual. But the whole aim is meditation ritual is to understand that what we can't perceive through our senses. Can you realize that? Because we can't really uh, see, feel, or touch the love and emotion we have for our kids, for our love. You know, that has to be the feeling of our realization as a life, isn't it? And the whole aim of the Buddhist philosophy or so called cool, meditation or yoga is to that realization and that's why sitting down you know every church we go every temple we go every mosque we go or the monastery in the mountain we go what the first thing they do is sit down and listen and feel and that is a very common i feel very powerful you know going to the church in the last even though i grown up in the buddhist and hindus in nepal 19 years 18 years being before joining because was last my uh, last 25, 30 years, I spent every Sunday I go to church. Not I'm rather, you know, um, uh, religions, but just the realization of the life. I think that's where the started, you know, a thousand years ago. Let's go there, realize, put in the harmony, everyone in the same mindset, you know, loving, emotional mindset, harmony, you know, then became energetic. We can recharge our energy level and come out, you know, better human being. The journey from that moment that that incident on your second deployment yeah. so you just you just joined the special forces at that point so it was right at the beginning of yeah. what turned out to be a 17 year stint yeah. in that organization so obviously a very long time yeah. if you i guess you've done a lot of reflection to reach this point yeah. now and at the time it was something that was very shocking and quite i guess humbling yeah. as well that 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 guy made that yeah. sacrifice yeah. for you did you 
has it been a progression? Because you were still doing a very uh, stressful, intense job um, for a prolonged period. Yeah. So how did, did, that, did that evolution happen during that time? You know, actually, it's a very good question because, um, yes, I think in our life, and even though, even like I said, being service, you know, like from that moment, 17 years, I think situation is always situation. We can't change any situation. What happened tomorrow, we don't know, you know. But I think this important is that how we respond to each situation and the true cause and purpose of that, the mission or the vision or we try for. I think it is very important because for me, it's, of course, yeah, every situation since then, but I was still truly, you know, like happy and, you know, driven for the colleagues, you know, for the people, for the friendship I had, for the country that hold my family and daughter suffer, you know. I think, but again, I think if you look in the minute, what we, what is biggest thing I realized is in over the years serving with the SF is that there is a two way of driving ourselves. One is self, so we call ego or identity. Mm. Or next one is the, you know like something wisdom drive you outside yourself. Mm -hmm. The minute we drive for with for ourselves. You know, let's say if you drive for myself, I want to be good at, I want to so and do this, I want to some, earn some whatever the craving for in a life, that eventually ha ha will have us. And that is the biggest problem, like we call anxiety, depression, PTSD, do that, that's where the starting point. The minute then you shift that energy, let's say for, for country, for the friends, for the loved one, because if you are you know, like not you are not associating your, with your own ego and identity, then that's where a lot of service come. You know, a lot of purpose, uh, purpose come. Mm. I think that's why choosing the true purpose and having a long-term vision, and that's why I normally say like, how you, how are we gonna see ourselves if we survive 20 years time, and are you still happy with that purpose and thing? If not change because eventually that will get us you know we might look happy and healthy and now but life is not that because every every living creature got 1.5 million uh, billions heartbeat you know we that's that's let's realize that you know then if in that time are you still willing that the cause and purpose you have which is 99 percent will be not nothing to do with us you know that then if you have that, and that helped me call out because then, you know, like my friend dying for me, uh, you know, like, and which is British white guy, you know, ne we never had met up before so much. And yet again, I think when you, when you see the true ultimate sacrifice for someone else, that's where the true humanity comes in. That's where the true your dedication and your, your you know, life doesn't actually count when you recognize that way and there's nothing to lose you know nothing to gain and i think that's definitely then that's my driven force and colleagues who are standing and, and something happened is there to rescue you you know that is a true purpose and true cause for us being alive and and also the family you know obviously are so close with my family and kids because every like like last even the last average expedition you know I was I tell I said yes to Harry because it is the cause you know something I wish I'm I see myself dying but it's okay isn't it this is the cause because it's not me I want to make the world record it's someone living their life being that situation we all been through and giving their life for some someone else for country and for the family they hold and then yet again they've been in that deep you know, dark places, but if we, your expertise and your opportunity giving them to change their way they think, then who you are, then what is the actually true purpose can be more than as being alive. And and, and then, I, you know, like, it's really good, uh, you know, this question, because I said, yeah, I, I, I even I told my mission kids, you know, we could die there, but it's worth it. And if you deal that way, there is no anxiety, there is no depression, there is no, you know, expectation to gain from. And then what is, what, what is the problem, isn't it? You've, you've kind of created or have these 
opportunities to to fulfill a purpose that is very um, powerful mm. like first well it kind of started right right at the beginning the the relationship between Britain and the Gurkhas yeah. is this is is a real opportunity to 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 find purpose I guess for yeah. for people for some people in Nepal um, and then and then you volunteered to go um, and serve with the special forces and did that for a really long time uh, then became a mountaineer and have have scaled I mean pretty much every all of the peaks over 8,000 meters I guess and, pretty much yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if we're thinking about people who who haven't created because they're incredible achievements yeah what about the if you were thinking about people who are in a, in a more normal uh, walk of life because those those decisions and those achievements led to opportunities that really have have sort of caused you to reflect and um, and then become very spiritual which not many people who've gone down that path necessarily yeah. do maybe um, what are your thoughts and maybe it's a difficult question but for people who who haven't got themselves into those positions and are, are living what we would maybe call more of a, a normal life mm. to to sort of make those make progress and find that that purpose for themselves yeah. I think for my over the years is uh, uh, find the true purpose of serving, you know, serving order. I think that's probably then, because like I say, a lot of all the problem we created with ourselves in our mind and it's for ourselves. And because the minute we identify ourselves with something else which we are not, you know, then that's not going to, in long term, that's not going to do good for us. And then, and something you are serve in so many ways, you know, like for a lot of mom, they are so good because they are constantly serving their kids, you know, dog or family because that beyond themselves, isn't it? That drive, oh my kids, they go to school there, drive whole day and night, you know, for example, but yet again, they are fine. But us as a man especially had a huge problem because we, we tend to, you know, have a muscle up, a lot of stuff, and we tend to, you know, uh, standing as a man and like we call the muli muli in nepal muli is a man man beam of the house you know mm. where a lot of people are hanging but uh, but we need to rely on as a human we can only hold maybe one year two years 20 years 30 years you know but eventually it, we're gonna have to collapse but only way to uh, standing yet is still you know f f finding the health or asking for some something else beyond ourselves either that could be service or that could be you know like asking or giving which you are not I think and have a true purpose beyond ourselves because um, uh, you know because only by focusing something else then who we are became nothing we uh, another guy that I've spoken to uh, on the on the podcast, he he rode his bike twenty thousand kilometres, or thereabouts, all all in the Far East. Ah. And um, one of the one of the quotes that he so a very long way by himself, self-supported, mm. just on a steel bike with with bags on his bike and so on. And one quote that I always remember is that um, he said the the happiest people he met on that journey were the were often the people who had the least. So true. Um, so which. True. It kind of because the, the way that you describe it, there's like a couple of things that come to mind. Firstly, it's like the service, the service of others as 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 a purpose for people to pursue. Yeah, it's something that people should actively, perhaps, pursue as an objective to to find the kind of purpose that you're talking about. Yeah, because I guess it makes sense in terms of what you're doing with your mountaineering and helping Harry and other people like that. It's your it's your purpose to help them. Uh, realize their ambition yeah um so you can achieve that on a smaller scale yeah, i absolutely. guess and that's that's part of the goal of the the podcast is yeah. to help share stories like this so that people can then maybe go and do something um something similar i guess one of the things that makes it difficult is that we um live in this kind of world of stuff and like acquisition and and it is yeah. and it is hard to to avoid that I think yeah. even I've reflected on it myself and you still I still struggle with it still find myself buying stuff yeah. that you don't need <laughs> you know but, um, yeah. but yeah that's a really interesting interesting reflection if you you mentioned like having a, a vision 
you know, uh, for, for for 20 years, for example, which is mm. which is a good. Um, uh, it's not. It's not the same as that question. Or where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in ten years? It's not. I, I think that, and this is my interpretation. Mm. Like a vision is more aspirational, mm -hmm. I guess. Like yep. what do you? Um, what are some of the key parts of what your life might consist of? Mm. How do you? How do you see that panning out now that you know your 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 daughter's kind of growing up? And what do you think the next like? 20 years might might look like for you for example yeah i think it is very you know great question i think for me it's like uh like when everyone has a limitation like physically mentally emotionally and spiritually but i think it is important every day to push the limit all the elements you know you know according to our own limitation you know Mm. And for me, it's like that's why I think I I really like to go uh, taking the people in the mountain because or the in trekking expedition also then re doing a lot of mental health retreats and meditation here in, in here in the UK now mm. is that the where I can find the balance of uh, you know I still need to earn enough to you know enough to my kids and family but also that will give me the ability to push my physical you know limitation where i can physically active and also and then give me the opportunity to, to you know sit down and meditation and and you know like and also give some sort of service but also i can you know earn something and i think that's where i still going to continue you know climbing with a lot of veterans and disability and if I can, and also that will allow me to go outside, be in the nature, helping a service so many ways, and come back and still really wanted to push my kind of you know understanding of the life. How can we overcome our uh, mental, you know, me, uh, you know, like how can I give this philosophy of life the way I've been it? Not not necessarily as a religion, but as a true human being. How can we overcome? by setting a limitation and true goal and we can actually live, you know, become true human. And uh, yes, that's why I'm still uh, working on this project. And uh, there's actually a few guys like Fossil War Blind who wants to climb and, you know, 6,000 meter. Another MPT guy wants to do the 7,000 7, meter peak. And I said like, yeah, you know, let's fix the date and that will allow us to go and push the, some sort of physical boundary, but also, you know, s help each other. And and also come and do the you know like uh, some retreat like spread, spreading the love of spirituality and understanding self understanding realization. So those are the my true kind of you know next few years uh, project. I really wanted to push that way. When you do the climbing with people who have particular uh, limitations, whatever they may be, whether it's mm. someone who can't see or someone who's missing a limb. What are the mechanics like of how that of that process works? Like, do you do you climb with them at certain points? Do you stand right next to them? Like, how? how what What are some of the things that you do to, like operationally? I guess yeah, to yeah. help them. I think for me is first the the fun of the uh, thing is I really wanted to walk and talk and share share as they are true. You know, like not you know, like not necessarily physical, but their emotional and spiritual path. And that allowed me to, you know, dive in deep and then straight away. And then, and then after, maybe I normally I say, like, this guy talking about uh, the blind guy, I say, like, let's go for two weeks walking, retreat, and climbing a small peak. Then that, I will get his ability, physical expression, mental and spirituality as well. I think that only uh, allow me to, by observing, you know, be with the with them and their you know activities so that's those are the my key and then straight away then i can put okay i i'll give them honest kind of from my process so you got this limitation physically in order to succeed we need this 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 manpower or kit and equipment and from your you know like mindful i think we uh, even a lot of people don't know because me and harry with harry for this average we spend a lot of time meditation a lot of time talking about the mindset oh really uh, yeah and uh, these are the key because um, key moment to highlight and l learn each other, and by only observation and being with true 
self then we can observe and realize and give them a feedback and then either they and you know like to be honest i think once you start talking they probably know anyways like oh fair enough you know that's what i need and mm. and i say like you need to sit down for 20 minutes you know do this like kind of live this breathing or mindful so what you want to achieve today or what you want to achieve so you already uh, put your mind and you know like your spiritual and en energy in that some without putting your mind and energy how can you achieve anyway you can achieve so far as you can't push the limit mm. so it is very important to put that practice and uh, be mindful you know of the danger and of the you know risks before you even been before you even actually you know had that problem i think that's the way only we can cope better yep all in the preparation yes yeah makes sense in t in terms of your your like your your background your outlook the the spiritual aspect of it how do you find like say you're returning to the UK for example and returning home mm -hmm. and uh, obviously we're in a, a nice in environment today which is difficult to <laughs> difficult to not in, not enjoy you know this is obviously it's very it's good but but day to day life you know isn't like that like how how do you find that the contrast i mean you've kind you kind of touched on it in terms of the, some of the things that you do every day um is that you know is it is that kind of where it stops because i'm just conscious that you do you do something incredible like go and climb everest which mm. takes well weeks or months yeah it's this time um, we were like two and a half months yeah <laughs> and then you come back and you're you know making beans on toast you know, like, <laughs> so true. How, and is there not how do you how, do you you know is it challenging to make that transition um, I, I guess you've done yeah. it many times, yeah. but that's you know it is very profound question. A lot of people ask this question, but I think important is uh, uh, meditation does help. But actually, at the same time, I actually uh, uh, had the research based on the Cambridge University, mm. and the, so they did the re because they asked the same. The professor asked the same question, and they says like list to the research, and what they found is the. Uh, uh, the professor Alain Fox, who is a professor of psychology and emotion, leading from UK uh, health, and she, the Alain Fox. So we talk, and she wrote actually a book on the Switchcraft. It's actually on on the market now, and we had a really good conversation. And she said, it's like our mind, our energy, in a way, within us, our spirit, you know, like the who we are, is the ability of shifting. Like the example is like if you're going playing the golf, you have a seven glove and 14 holes, 18 hole, but you see, but you and I go, then we see our own way, then we choose the which ball and which golf, which glove we're gonna pick, mm -hmm. isn't it? That we within our limitation of understanding, and we will pick that glove within the box, like seven or ten of them, and hit the ball. And exactly same in or into the, our spirit, spirit level or the who we are in our memory level, then we choose. Some of some of will choose the wrong goal. Some of will choose the as close as possible. Some of will choose the perfect one mm. according to our understanding of who we are. So I think, and the the the, the research is that, and also the they said uh, one of the great tools to understand health is meditation, because. Like we, you know, like a lot of thing is come within us, isn't it? Like our, our whatever we project, the problem we call, the sadness we call, the happiness we call, the richness we call, is actually within us. So that can be monitored, yeah? That can be monitored and observed through our own ourselves. And I think that's why, you know, it's in, because I, I've been doing this one for years now. I think I, it's someone, someone say some of the monk in the Himalayas, they say that they need, they need 10 or 20 seconds to wipe out all the memories because they are practicing the years and years. And for, for, for me, is if I can sit down and like we say, the one we did, just close your eyes mm. and then any of the... Um, problem or the so the stress or distress cause or happiness cause is the is our own self you know it's only in the mind but still my heart is still beating my lungs are still working but that has no intention to with any of the situation you know it's to do with being alive and be happy then if you can observe that 
than to be honest, a lot of problem goes away, but obviously need to go deeper because we are always thought and we give the priority then, oh, I'm not doing this one, well, I'm this one. And if you can monitor that and just sit down and monitor that, and it's like you can actually realize. And uh, one of the great good uh, exercise I do for when I teach meditation is uh, the limitation because when you sit down in the water, if you're hot tub or cold water, and sit down the way water level is your hot level, yeah, because we never see the energy and spirit, you know, like spirit we're sending. But if you see the hot letter, you know, every hot bit, you can see the wave of your energy passing through how far and how far. But if you are really, really quiet, then your 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 heart beat will come closer, and heart beats go further. Then only for us as a human being, we need a, you know, scientific, we need to see, we need to feel that it makes sense. But if you stand, you can't feel that. But you can actually realize that that is one of the closest thing. We can put it in the people in energy or spiritual or the self-awareness situation. Those are the things I do to practice quite a lot. And that will, then straight away you put in, in different mindset, you know, and then, then you come up, then a lot of the problem will solve. And you shared the, that with with Harry, yeah. And he, yeah. Because I guess he's been on his, he, on his own journey as well yeah. because of injury and so on, yeah. which is extremely challenging, I yeah. guess, in lots of ways. So. Yeah, a lot of ways. One of the biggest finding I will share with Harry is like over the years, and I, I've been I've been into this thing anyway. I, I kind of every time, even like 2015, climbing with the Gurkhas and uh, our SF uh, colleague. I used to say that, right, every morning I want you to visualize what is the hardest climbing we're going to do. Okay, Kumbu Ice Fall, I visualize that. Breathe in, breathe out, and how are you going to cross over that? And that will allow us, our physical and emotional and mental state, in a better state than without realizing. And that's the one really thing. And also we do that a lot of every day with, with Harry. And, I, and Harry became really good later on. He does hours sitting down, a lot of people. You know, those are the behind. And then one of the greatest things we realize is uh, not only Harry, any of the amputees. I've been working like five different amputees and, you know, like veteran PTS over the years. Mm. Is that the, you know, they call the phantom pen, isn't it? Like they had no legs, but the pen is always there. And Harry... And other people used to say to me, like, when they say wake up and they jump out from bed because they didn't realize in the biological and uh, genetical level, the leg is still exist. Yeah. It's only the, you know, like the, you yeah. know, our body don't have a leg, but that doesn't mean our, you know, uh, energy is still there. Yeah. No, and he jumped out. And yeah, so like and the nerves higher up. We'll yeah, still think, still think that there. there's a leg there. Yeah. Then what, what we, one of the over the I think a few years back, and once he said, like I said to Harry, wouldn't be because he said it's the pen coming in the leg, which you know like called the phantom pen in 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 terms now. Mm. I said, do you mind doing a meditation every morning and massage your leg? Yeah, massage your leg and one hour, two hour, and you can't see the physical, but mental massage you know what over the years the pain goes start going down wow because then because you are we we those are the energy like we say nerve those are the biological you know and memories and genetical memories we can see our perspective level but you can only be part of that with your mindful and awareness and how can you be that then just you need to be part of that every problem every situation is that we can't avoid you know we have to like uh, like be a part but be a part in in a witness way you know not in a you know like suffering or carving way minute, the minute we carving with giving energy the minute we are damping, we're giving energy, but by witnessing, we just witness, we don't be part of giving an energy. That's how we became the self-healing process. That's how we self-realization come. So those are the one of the great uh, things, uh, finding with the Hari and a uh, lot of other, you know, uh, people as well, and realizing that once you realize that part, then it's, it's easy to take you to that spiritual path. That's great. It's it's funny to have, like I explained to you. There's the I've done a lot of podcasts before. Well, forty six or forty seven um, in the past. I did them like a couple of years ago, and then coming back to it now because I had a, 
a kind of a vision of what I was hoping to achieve. Um, and it's just good to, because the lessons are off, there's often similarities in the lessons between people yeah. when they reflect on on their, their big decisions, their, their life and so on. And um, one that's definitely come up again and again is around um, service being um, one of the like, like one of the pillars of um, a uh, gratifying life, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And that can come in many different ways, shapes yeah. or forms. But um, yeah, the spiritual aspects, in listening to you reflect on those, it's fascinating. So thank you very much for taking the time. I, uh, I really do appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure and thank you for having me. And uh, it's been great to share like our, my philosophy and who I am and all the achievement and to share with the people and hopefully and those who are listening can learn something and became who they are whatever they do is like make it life joyful yeah marvelous thank thanks you. a lot krishna thank thanks you thanks mate thank you